Now let's use the apicus to take the square roots of numbers. So I'm actually going to follow the instructions of Welton J. Crook. Uh, he explains how to take the square root and it says in the opening paragraph, the extraction of the square root of a number may be accomplished easily enough by means of the abacus, but the process is somewhat slow and tedious. It consists of a long series of additions and subtractions. So in case you cannot see the website, this is it. So feel free to go there and I'm going to follow all the rules. So if you're wondering how am I coming up with this, I'm just following his rules. So let's get back to the abacus and start with a simple one. Let's try to find the square root of 9. So we're going to put 9 over here. And like we've done in multiplication, I will be using the abacus over here, but it does not represent a number such as 1, 10 billion. Okay, so let's just proceed. So what we have to do is that we will put one number up there, and then we subtract one from over here. We continue with this, but in a slightly different way. We now always add 2. So we add 2, and there's 3 over here, so we're going to subtract 3 from over here. Now, we're going to continue until this number is at least as big as this number, and that's not the case just yet, so we're going to add 2 again. There's 1, 2, and now we have 5, so we're going to subtract 5. We subtract it and all this is cleared out which is good. So the final step is to add 1 and then divide by 2. So 6 divided by 2 as we know is 3 and that is indeed the square root of 9. We are going to finish this off by doing one more complicated example. We are going to take the square root of 1156 which is 1156 and the process is similar but slightly different. We are going to begin the same way by adding 1 here. Now instead we are going to look at this in groups of 2 and once again I am just following the instructions of Welton Crook and by all means feel free to go on that website to see what those instructions are. So we are going to subtract 1 from here. So 11 minus 1 is 10. We are just going to get rid of that. Now we add 2 over here and we are going to subtract 3 from 10. So 10 minus 3 is 7, so we have 5, 2, 7. Uh, 3 is still not as big as 7, so we are gonna, going to continue to add 2. So we have 5, subtract that from 7, and we are left with 2. Now 5 is greater than 2, so there's a different step now that wasn't included when we did the square root of 9. What we do now is we add 0, so let's pretend there's a 0 here, and we are going to add 11 to the whole thing. So that's 1, and 1 so we have 61 as the total and when we have 61 we are now going to subtract 61 from 256 and that actually gives us 195 so let's come over here and subtract that we have 195 and we're going to continue to add 2 so let's add 2 and now subtract 63 from 195 and that gives us 132 so let's just clear this up 132 now we must continue by adding 2 so 63 plus 2 which would give us 65 and now subtract 65 from 132 leaving us with 67 so let's just fix this up we need 67 and continuing the process, add 2 once again, subtract 67, and that leaves us with this being all cleared out. So the last step, like before, is adding 1 and then dividing by 2. So 68 divided by 2 is 34, and that gives us the correct answer of the square root of 1156.